want to thank our sponsor, My Green Mattress. And now it's My Green Mattress. I am so happy to have this. So much so, I can't even get off of it right now. I want to thank you all so much. I'm so grateful. Temperature regulated, beautiful mattress. It's got just enough spring. It has enough cushion. And here's the good part. It's actually good for you. It's eco-friendly, no chemicals, a wonderful little bounce. And uh, my kind of company because it's family owned. You get a warranty. Why else would you not get my green mattress? No, not my green mattress. It'll be your green mattress, but you go to my green mattress. There are sponsors. I'm so appreciative. And this is something you're going to want to have too. I have today who happens to be coming on here, someone who has experienced the transformation, experienced resilience, experienced uh, making his life better from uh We'll find out today some some pretty uh, dark places. My dog is, is is tugging on my cord over here. She wants attention. Come on, Buffy, go to your go to your go somewhere else. <laughs> oh no, she pulled me out. Oh my god, can they hear me now? I, I, I'm not hearing anything in here. Oh, Buffy, can you hear me, Paul? Hi, Paul. Hey, bro. I got my own little. I, I we have our own little rescue dog here, and she's just she's really in need of a little bit of love for some reason. What, what's your dog's name? Her name is Buffy. Come here, Buffy. Come here. Hey, hey, Craig. Yeah. Is today your birthday? Today is uh the, this guy's birthday. Yes, it is. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. I have another way of doing this. We did it last night in the coaching program. Do it the same theme, but say ha for ha 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 ha. Oh, I, I was going to do a really amazing rendition of happy birthday for you. But maybe I'll do it later. Okay, I know. Well, you are a musician. A lot of people don't know this. Paul Hoffman's our guest. Paul, jingle writer, among a million other things, which we'll get to, he's the one that did the song. We all know this song. We all know this little riff. Have you driven a Ford lately? Pardon me if I what? if I kind of went off tune on that. I don't have uh, auto tune. So. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautifully, brother. You did beautifully. How about I do it? Has anyone ever done an opera? Have you driven a Ford? Wait, have you driven a Ford lately? How about that? That's pretty <laughs> awesome. That's pretty awesome. But but no, nobody has ever done that. And thank you for doing that. Yeah. So that was many years ago. Money probably still comes in from that. Uh, drips and drabs, bro. I mean, I you know it, they don't run it anymore. It ran for uh, about nine years. Yeah. And and um, as you well know, the uh, the uh, advertising world, SAG after and so forth. So I did every Ford commercial that was on radio and TV mm -hmm. for nine years, every one of them. So I made lots and lots of, you know, those little blue checks, right? You know, those little TNR checks, talent residuals. Yeah, yeah. Yep. we love that. Yeah. And they're very little for me. I did a Matlock. I think I received uh, four <laughs> cents the other day from the residual check on that. Four cents. I said the postage is more than that. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I probably got maybe through the course of my, my career in that world, I probably ended up maybe getting a check for one or two cents. But I will tell you, Craig, every time I got a check, no matter how much it was, I was grateful. I said, thank you. Thank you, God. I appreciate the uh, the 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 abundance and the gratitude and the blessing. It's true. And and I, I love that you said that because I think there's such a great energy shift when we come from that space of gratitude. There's so much entitlement that goes on in the world. It's almost like we're following the entitled people. We probably should follow the grateful people. It's it's an energetic space that is undeniable. It's something that's very uh, uplifting. It's elevating. And I, I appreciate you for doing that. And I make jokes. That's my way of staying elevated as well. I make jokes about my Matlock residual, but you're right. I'm still, as I'm making the joke, I'm actually in bliss and blessed and in gratitude and thankfulness that I'm receiving anything in the entertainment business. How about it, man? Where we come from, there was, we were supposed to have nothing. Absolutely, nothing. bro. Not, not Absolutely. even for the entertainment business, just period. Like, nothing was supposed to be ours the way life started off. Tell us a little bit about how your life started off and, and how you ended up here today. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, you know, you are one of my dear friends. We've known each other a long time, Mr. Shoemaker. Yeah. And uh, have we fo we've followed our, our paths uh, uh, for almost probably 20 years. Um, and uh, so I, um, I started out, uh, you know, I wanted to be a pro professional basketball player. And, uh, you know, I'm 6'1". Um, uh, 
I went to college on a basketball scholarship. I went to the University of Vermont, which is a Division I school, yeah. and um, got to play college basketball. And my claim to fame at, uh, at Vermont was, um, for those of you who know uh, who Dr. J is, Julius Irving, um, I actually played against him. He went to the University of Massachusetts, and, yeah. uh, and he was on the court the same time I was. And um, I didn't guard you were, him. You played him so far back, he was Nurse J. He, he, he was... <laughs> He was intern. He was patient. Patient. He was in, intern J for the J. Right. Yes, that was a long time ago. That was a back when you also had a fro. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Exactly. You guys were throwing it out. We were throwing it were, down, you were, bro. You were, fr you were throwing down. <laughs> That's right. And, and so I ended up playing for a year, and I ended up then quitting school. Um, and uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. A friend of mine was quitting school, the, quitting school at the same time. His name was Neil Ratner. And he said, so what are you going to do? I said, you know, Neil, I don't know. Probably just go back to Brewster, New York, which is where I'm from, and figure it out. He said, well, why don't you come with me? I'll get and, and, and go to work for this band that I'm going to do work with called Edgar Winters White oh. Trash. Oh, and my he, God. No way. And he, yeah. And he was the road manager. And I said, so what would I do? He said, well, you'll be a roadie. I said, what's a roadie? He said, you know, you'll drive a truck around the country and set up equipment. I said, I've never set up an amplifier in my life. He said, don't worry, we'll have a lot of fun. Yeah, don't worry about it. And it, then, it they'll, they'll teach you how to do it. And I love I love that you were, this is something you still bring today. And I want everybody to learn lessons from the experiences. You were willing. You're willing to learn. And that's such a big key that a lot of people don't even have the willingness. They stay in fear. Like you could have gone, I know nothing. I always remind you that that movie. I don't. Do you remember uh, Gone with the Wind? Yeah, not to go way back. Like this is before our grandparents. But she goes, I don't know nothing about birth and no babies. I've had this, so many situations like that, including giving birth to a child uh, that I was the midwife for. Anyway, so you 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 you're presented with this position of going on the road. Yep. Can you tell everyone? Because I already know Edgar Winter. That is. One of the all-time classic songs for me, classic rock, was Edgar Winter. And so tell people about that and how you ended up on this tour. So, so uh, well, the band, so the, the White Trash Band was a 12-piece band. And these guys were all boyhood friends, okay? And uh, so the band um, was probably going to be one of the biggest bands in the country, uh, except they just couldn't get along with each other. And even though they knew each other forever. And so, as I say, so I traveled the country for a year setting up equipment. And we opened up for bands like the Allman Brothers and 10 Years After and Rod Stewart and Alice Cooper and so forth and so on. And um, we did a live record at the Whiskey. Um, and uh, and so that band got, as I say, they, they, I worked for them for a year. And then when that band broke up, um, the, uh, I stayed with Edgar for a little bit. The road manager buddy of mine got fired. So they made me the road manager, which means I didn't have to drive the truck anymore. I can fly now. And that was um, when Frankenstein came out. Oh my God. I love that so, song. Right. So I worked, I worked with that band that the Edgar winter group, it was called then, um, yeah. for about, I don't know, maybe three or four months. And then the lead singer. For the White Trash Band was a guy named Jerry LaCroix, who uh, made Jerry's flying up there somewhere. He died a couple of years ago. He called me up. He said, listen, I'm going to put the White Trash Band back together again, but I'm going to call it Jerry LaCroix and White Trash. You know, bands, you know, reincarnations, if you sure. will. And, uh, and he said, I want you to manage me. And, and getting back to what you said a moment ago, I said, Jerry, I have no idea how to manage a rock band. He said, I don't, I don't care. I think you can do it. I said, good, I'm going to go for it. So Craig, you know, I'm Italian, bro. I throw things up on the wall and I see what sticks. Okay. That's how I approach life. I'm always open and willing for the next adventure. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I ended up think, I said, well, okay, Jerry, I'll manage you, but, but I need to find a co-manager because I didn't really know anything about this. Right. So there was a guy I met along the way. His name was Ron Strassner. And he managed um, a band called Rare Earth. Oh, yeah. And you might remember them. I just want to sure. celebrate, right? I just want to celebrate. Yeah, you see, you and, I, you and I can. You oh, know, my like, God. These, these, are, these, are all my, these are all in a jukebox that I was playing when I was a kid. 
in a in Angelo's Pizza Parlor. The first song I would choose was Frankenstein. There you I was, go. I choose the right. Uh, what I wanted to. That was our version of Spotify. Which you, exactly. A seventeen. Right. F three. Whatever it is. Right. <laughs> put the quarter in. Put, put the quarter in. Yeah, you put it's the quarter. So- and you get to choose three songs and Frankenstein was always at the top of my list. Right. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's great. So I go to, I, I go have a meeting with Ron and of course he knew Jerry and, you know, knew me and, and he said, you know, Paul, I really don't have, have the time to do it because I'm really busy with Rare Earth. And, and years later, Ron also um, um, managed B.B. Um, King. And I did a bunch of commercials that B.B. King sang. I did one for Burger King and, and B.B. It was, I'll tell that story later. Anyway, so, so he said, but I have some friends you can go see. Um, his company was called Rev Foster and Associates. They might be interested. And I said, well, tell me a little more about them. He said, well, they manage Three Dog Night and Steppenwolf in the heyday. I, so I went to All see right. them. They were on Beverly Drive, bro, in, in Beverly Hills, it's right? Ste- Ste- so Steppenwolf, I went- by the way, number two to Frankenstein yeah. is Steppenwolf, okay? There you go. <laughs> Born to be wild, bro. Born, Born to, wild, to be wild. That's, and, that's number two on the, on the list. That's the Shoemaker, jukebox. that song was written about you, bro. We, anyway. <laughs> hey, not only me. We're going to get to how it was written about you, too. We, uh, we co-authored, uh, co-authored that Born to be wild. I accept. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> you and, know that too. I accept. And so, so I went to see them. They said we'd love to. We'd love to do that. So they, I made a deal with them, and I got them a record deal on Mercury Records. We recorded the album at Ike and Tina Turner Studio in Inglewood, which was another experience. And uh, one night, the uh, the alarms went off. The next thing you know, the lights come back on, and everybody's got machine guns except us, of course. But all the security and everybody, it was wacky. So we went, so I got him a deal, a record deal. We did the record, and then we went on tour as the opening act on a 45-city tour, the opening act for Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath. Oh, no. Yeah. And that's, the, so, and that's my third jukebox. These are all the classic jukebox songs from my youth. This so we're, awesome. We're, we're on tour and uh and we're uh, we we just finished a show in chicago uh and we ended up uh, both bands you know we kind of got friendly of course with each other because we've been together for about 35 days at this point and uh um so we were at this uh, club called the rush up club on rush street in chicago and uh and long story short the drummer in our band a guy named bobby ramirez got into a bar fight and was killed okay mm-hmm and um that night okay and uh so the band broke up and uh and so my friend neil who got gave me the gig as a roadie called me up and said hey man i'm so sorry to hear about bobby because of course he knew bobby from white trash days and he said so what are you going to do now i said you know neil i think i'm going to go back to law school because i'm very fascinated by the law and uh, uh he said no man listen my dad he came from a really rich family my dad just set me up in a tour management company and my first client is Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he said, I need you to fly to Germany and tour manage them. Now, I said, well. Now, me- and, and you're, you're this young guy. And, Man, I'm, I'm, tw- I'm 23 years that's old. Very young guy. And you're, and you're approaching this world going, hey, what's next? And in the meantime, what's going on with you spiritually throughout all of this? Because so many times what happens when you get these offers, there you're with another one on my jukebox. Uh, welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Boom, boom. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. I saw them in concert. You were probably standing right next to the soundboard. And so I want to know, these are temptations for a young man. Ass when you're in the rock yeah. business. Even in the comedy business, we are filled with temptation. People would, tr- we used to have, I don't know if you ever had this in music, but <laughs> they pay you in, uh, it, they either give you white, right? <laughs> it, 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 white or green, they would say. So, you, you, want, you want white or green. You know what white was, everyone? It was coke. Yep. And I can't tell you the amount of times I said, sure, give me the white. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. that's, that's great. Because I'm going to spend the green on the white anyway. And there you go. And, might, I, might as well, I might as well get rid of the middleman. So it might as well get rid of the middleman. So, so Paul, you face this in your life. You face these the drugs, the alcohol, and things like that. 
and you had to come to a point in your life. And how did that happen? I mean, it's nice to hear the rock and roll tours, and this is amazing. You kept taking these jobs. You didn't know what you were talking about or doing, and you just learned on the fly, which I also recommend to people. Say yes. Right, Paul? Mm -hmm. the Absolutely, message, man. Say yes. Say yes and be available and open to whatever is going to unfold in front of you. Now, exactly. unfortunately, you folded up some dollar bills, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but, yeah. So, so, the, so what happened? So, you know, at that point, Craig, you know, you asked me about spirituality. You know, I mean, I've always kind of been spiritual. Did I have, I mean, I was raised Catholic. Of course, I wasn't practicing. By the way, just so you know, the, the end of the rock stories, I just got to tell you. So, the last band I worked for was I was Pink Floyd's tour manager for two years. And uh, are they in the jukebox? Yeah, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I, bro. I, I, I did the dark side of the moon tours well, for two years. Well, the dark side of the moon. I'm going to take you to not the jukebox, but now we're inside of my team fort. I had a fort with mm -hmm. stereo speakers, and I would take the speakers and put one over here and one over here. Those are the original headphones. Yes. And listen to dark side of the moon and then yeah. try to sync it up with Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And Wizard of Oz my favorite all-time film so yeah this is a whole retrospective <laughs> retrospective back to my childhood but i did not have spirituality i wonder how that you know did that happen yeah. from catholicism i mean no I no so what happened so, I, my life. so here, here's that here's how it came for me so i got out of that world i got in the jingle business bro so totally self-taught i wrote have you driven a ford lately i made a shitload of money and then the white powder started to be prominent in my life so oh, i didn't do go. bro i will tell you i mean truthfully did no drugs when i was on the road because man i had a big responsibility i was responsible for like 50 man road crew big oh yeah it was crazy I used, but i learned I, I, yeah it, that's a tough job i had to tour with a rock band and right or i didn't so have I to learned, but I tour with I, rock, and you, right, you were I probably the over, dealer though were you the dealer no, <laughs> did you become oh, the no, dealer <laughs> no, no man i was i was the guy who ran the tour i i, I collected the money i booked the yeah. tour i took care of the band so so it taught, taught, taught me about organization and systems. It basically taught me about business back then. And so, yeah. and so when I, as I say, when I got off the road and I got in the jingle business and I started to make a shitload of money, um, cause you know that world and then have you driven a Ford lately? I mean, I made probably 650 grand a year just on have you driven a Ford lately? And, uh, and I was one of the top 10 jingle guys and I started to dabble, bro. Started to dabble, started to dabble. And then I started to just dive in. And so I would, I had a $2,500 a week cocaine habit. And um, my, my, my dealer lived two blocks from the studio I worked in. So it was very convenient for me. And as you well know, that, that's a very insidious drug. And so what happened to me, make a long story short, on November 14th, 1988, I woke up. I was living in the village. I had just gotten married. Um, and um, uh, I woke up and there was a, a guy with no legs sitting in my apartment. Now, I would say, Craig, it was a uh, hallucination because at that point I was pickled, bro. I was snorting as much blow as I could, drinking as much vodka as I could. And every now and then I might smoke a little bit of weed to balance it all out because, you know, you got to stay balanced there, bro. Yeah, and now, you know? now wait, the, the person with no legs was an illusion. Uh, it wasn't yeah, either. It wasn't an illusion. somebody who was severed. No, <laughs> so, no, an illusion. That would be a whole and other I, story. Right. And I spent the whole day with him and then I, I, uh, said, I have to get you out of the apartment. He said, well, I don't have any legs. I said, it's a good point. So November 14th, 1988, cold and rainy, New York City, West Village. I bolt out of my apartment. I go to a hardware store. I buy about $500 worth of chains and fasteners, okay? And, and um, came home, laid it all out. I'm very organized, bro. Nuts here, screws here, eye bars here, bolts, <laughs> pedals. And I started to put this thing together, to put this guy on my bike. I was going to give him my bike. So I bought this, this seat contraption that's got hand, uh, uh, hand pedals. I put this. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on, time out, time out. It's a real person. See, no, I no, think it's, we it's all a, thought this is. It's an hallucination, but but he's as real as I'm hallucination. talking. Yeah, Did I'm you talking really to you. go get the nuts and bolts I, I, and put this thing together? Yeah, yeah. And when I sold my house in Hancock Park about eight, nine years ago, my ex-wife said, hey, look what I found in the attic. And it was chains and fasteners that I bought that day. Oh, so, my God. So anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to put this thing together. And my, my uh, wife at the time and mother-in-law walked in and said, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean what am I doing? I'm trying to get this guy out of here. What guy? This guy. Because he's clear. I mean, I see him. Next thing they do is they call a friend of mine, Marion Cowings, to take me to St. Vincent's Hospital, which is seven blocks away, 
under the guise that they were going to come and get the guy out of the apartment. I said, great idea. Let's go. Now, I'm about ready to blow a, ca- a gasket, okay? Hyperventilating, really pickled, uh, uh, full-blown DTs, the whole nine yards, Craig. And so I get to the emergency room, and now I'm really in, in it, man. I'm seeing spiders on the walls. It's just really, I'm really freaked out, man. And, and the doctors keep saying, hey, we, we need to admit to you. I say, there's nothing wrong with me. We got to get the guy out of my apartment. And that went on for three hours. Finally, they asked me if they could take my blood pressure. I said, yeah, you can take my blood pressure. And uh, in New York State, they can't, they can't admit you into a hospital unless you're a danger to yourself. Now, I wasn't going to shoot myself. wasn't going to cut my wrist. All I want to do is get the guy out of my apartment, okay? So they took my blood pressure, obviously, with some kind of a very dangerous level, if you will. And the next thing they did was they put me in a straight jacket. Mm-hmm. You ever been in a straight jacket? Uh, only for a magic trick. <laughs> okay. okay, good. Very, very uncomfortable, I, bro. I prefer it that way. Handcuffs I've tried. Right. Not a good thing, not, right. not a good experience right. when you don't want to be in them. Exactly. And you didn't want to be in this straight jacket, no. and you ended up in this straight jacket. Now, Put I, me in a straight jacket. Then they yeah. strapped me to a gurney like they did in Silence of the Lambs and took mm-hmm. me to the 14th floor psych ward. And I spent two weeks there. And I remember, here's where spirituality comes in, bro. Yeah. I remember I, I put my head on, you know, Craig, you know, you and I both know in, in the world of drug addiction and, and, you know, life's an addiction to begin with. But in that world, you know, you know, you're not doing things properly. You know, you got to stop. Right. I mean, at least for, for at least the way I was doing There's it. There's something inside I didn't, of you that's yeah, saying same, same. all along, even with all the cover ups, even with all the lies, even with all the denial, even justifications, rationalizations, blame, victimhood, all Absolutely. of that underneath all of that. Everybody listen, if you peel away all of those ways that you can deflect and get away from the truth if you peel away the truth will be revealed and you will be revealed absolutely and that's that's what we need to get to is reveal your true authentic self and all of these all of these ways these distractions even career can be distracting anything can be distracting to take you away from who you really are and i think that that's with something you do because you're now a personal discovery architect. Yes, sir. Inter- 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 yes, sir. Interesting because most people are saying I'm a personal development coach and all that, but you are a personal discovery architect teaching people through your experiences because we've heard a lot of these experiences today of how you architect, you were an architect of your own life and your own fate and you ended up doing things and taking chances and taking risks and it all turned out, at the end, it turned out great. Because all these opportunities unveiled themselves, and now you have the opportunity to bring people to the light, to their true essence, to their true self. I love what you did years ago. I still have them somewhere. You made CDs of mm-hmm. success songs. Yeah. How, how in the world did that, did that we happen? All, we tap into our creative spark. Right. I know that. But let's share with us how you do it's helped over 3 million people in the world. It's uh, these, uh, these success systems that you developed. It, 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 there's these sounds, and the sounds have bring a vibration inside of my body and inside of my spirit. It is very, very unique. You can't just get it by walking down the street. It's, it's this uh, resonance that happens in the body and in the soul. So tell me, how in the world were you inspired to do something like that? <laughs> Again, bro, you know, fell into it, bro. Fell into, I fell it. into it. So, so as you know, we had a we had a common spiritual center. You and I together called the God Band. Yeah. This is where I met you. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I was on the board of directors of Agape for fifteen years. That is my my spiritual my spiritual home, if you will. Beck, Michael Beckwith has been one of my spiritual teachers. And and I met a guy there. He was a, a guest speaker on a Wednesday. His name was T Harv Ecker. Okay? Oh yeah, sure. So T. Harv had a, had a business called Peak Potentials. Now, I had never been to a personal development, if you will, um, seminar. I mean, Tony Robbins. I mean, I've heard of all these guys. So Harv says, hey, man, come to my Millionaire Mind Intensive. I said, great. So it was in Laguna Beach. He, back then, it was a free event. Um, and and uh, he was really good at selling you into the next event and so forth. So there was about 3,000 people there. He gets up on stage. He talks for three days comes up to me after and says, hey, man, what do you think? And I said, Harv, you're a really, really good teacher. My God, this is the first time I've ever, ever experienced any of this kind of thing. Tell people about money and how to change your money blueprint. If you think poor, you are poor. But if you think abundant, you're abundant. 
He said, so what do you think? I said, man, you're a really good teacher. Your music sucks. <laughs> he said, what do you mean my music sucks? I said, well, you seem to play every cliched money song out there to fit into your principles. The Beatles, money can't buy you love. The OJs, money, money. Okay. Pink Floyd's Pink Floyd. money. I said, Harvey, yeah. when, you, when you play songs by these other people, who do you think people think of? You or them? He said, well, mm. I guess them. I said, right. He said, what? I said, so why don't you have your own song? Because I come from marketing, uh, Craig. I understand the power of music in marketing. Okay. And I understand marketing. And he said, uh, well, how would I do that? You know, he had an attitude. I said, well, I'll write you a song. So I wrote him a song called I've Got a Millionaire Mind. And the reason I used that title is because during the whole weekend, he'd maybe 15 times a day say, turn to your neighbor, give him a high five and say, I've got a millionaire mind. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote a song called I've Got a Millionaire Mind. And sang it live, right about a month later, he comes up to me after and says, hey man, can you write songs for all my courses? I said, well, Harv, if the deal's right, I could do anything. Mm -hmm. That's my negotiating mm -hmm. tactic, right? Mm -hmm. I don't talk money, but huh. the deal's right. Right. So anyway, we made a deal. I ended up writing 16 songs for him, for all his courses. Uh, and then I got a call one day from Jack Canfield, okay, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Sure. He said, hey, Paul, Jack Canfield here. I heard Harb Ecker got a song, How Do I Get One? Mark Victor Hansen, Robert Allen, Cynthia Kersey, Lisa Nichols, Alex Mandozi, all these people called me for songs. So I said, hmm, I must be onto something here. So I created success songs. Yeah. And so what these songs do, because it's frequency, like you said, Chris, mm -hmm. it's frequency, man. Music is frequency. I want, so people, I, want, I want people to hear this, what he's saying. This is really important because it's not something that we're taught in school. Or it's not something that you see on the news. It is not told to us. But, except mm -hmm. for these situations where you're talking to someone who's an expert and has experience in this. I want people to hear what this means by frequency, what goes through our bodies and in our spirits, what yeah. happens, why you are doing these songs, what goes on inside of us while listening to these songs. Well, see, so, so everybody, each and every one of us has a unique frequency. There is nobody on the planet like Mr. Shoemaker, Mr. Hoffman, or anybody that's listening to this thing here. There's nobody that's like you. You're a unique individual that has your, you have your own sensibilities, your own, your own heart space, your own mind space, your own minds. You are yeah. unique. And, and unfortunately, what happens too much in life is you, you get away from that frequency because you think that you need to be something other than who you truly are. And of course, Oscar Wilde said it best. You might as well be you because everybody else is taken. Okay. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and so, so I started, I wrote these songs. Now, success songs, if you go to successsongs.com, um, you know, you can down, you can give me your name and email. I'm a marketer, I, but I'm very, very conscious and, and ethical, if you will, um, if I don't say so myself. But I, I give you two songs. If you like them, great. You can maybe buy the, the full complement of them or not. I don't care. I still give you two. They'll change your life anyway because the success songs change your mind states, which is my word for mindset, mind state habits, beliefs, and, and rituals. And what that does is then it gets you to hear life. This is a really important part of it because it's a frequency. You get to hear life from a higher vibration mm. because what will happen is your vibration, your frequency will be lifted when you listen to these songs because they're powerful, they're powerful kind of affirmations, if you will, about what's possible in life. Because anything's possible in life once you believe it is. But if you keep putting roadblocks in front of you, what I call mind traps, that's my word for limiting beliefs. I'm, I'm doing a quiz. It'll be uh, out in about 30 days. And I'm branding this concept called mind traps, which is my word for limiting beliefs. Craig, you know me. I'm, I'm like you, bro. I come up with my own language. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it gets me in trouble. Uh, yeah. I just said that in the last episode. <laughs> I don't like quoting people. Yeah. I, 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 I wanna make my own quote it can be inspired by another person but i went same with exactly. comedy same with music it's it's like we have a creator inside of us that we can tap into at any time it, i encourage people to do it and we all have it paul absolutely. and i are not any more quote, <coughs> gifted than anyone else absolutely. we only yeah. have the gift of willingness and open-mindedness and to listen to our absolute authentic self this thing inside of us that's you know 
potency that uh, they talk about at Agape back with, and it's that is wishes to be revealed. And all it is is a matter of getting out of our way and our fears and our thoughts and the pe- the doubt and the worries and all those things that prevent us from being our true self and really living our life to the fullest. Not absolutely. Not at a minimum frequency, but at the highest Frankenstein frequency. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I love that song, hey, song for that reason. It brought it's I'll bring us back to the beginning of our conversation <laughs> right. when you toured with Edgar Winter. That song when I was a little kid really, really sent me into all of this. Like uh, I wasn't I wasn't doing drugs yet. I was too young. But that brought me to that stage. That was your drug. It was my drug. Yeah. That yeah. kind of music and, and uh Pink uh, Pink Floyd and Deep Purple, the whole side of that album. Right. People I want people to understand music and laughter and comedy this is what i've been about for so long and i actually happen to be really good friends with so many top musicians and paul is as well and we've experienced this everyone we've experienced life when you up level it we up level when you just get immersed in a song and and you're just blasting it there's a reason you're blasting it because it takes over you it takes over your entire you have you have no other thoughts when you're immersed in music, when you're immersed in laughter and, and song, you have no other thoughts. You have nothing else to prevent you from your absolute happiness and bliss. So when, they, when, when they're doing um, uh, smoke on the water, that whole machine head, the whole side, lazy, space trucking, I would just go, whoa, my God, I there's nothing else going on. I have no homework. Now I come back and get detentions but that's okay that's okay okay bro that's okay that's okay you listen man you 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 you, you haven't done well bro so you, so you know you fall so you you here's one of, the most, one of the most important things that i think you if you can get anything out of this is follow your heart follow yeah. your, I, your I, heart but, folks. now that now that's a quote from someone else i want you to explain to people break that down what follow your heart your means. Heart. i when i coach when i have this this, my whole objective is let's give people some other opportunities to check out other methodologies, other mm-hmm. techniques, other steps taken to get us to this evolved space. And you know what? You're, you're right. You said something. It's not a brag. You and I have done very, very well. Mm-hmm. Now, there's no, no blessing that we had. I, don't, I think you said you came from money. I definitely came from poverty. I, know. I didn't come from money. Come from money. Oh, okay. Somebody else did. Uh, well, well, there you go. Neither one of us came from money. And I, I would probably guess that our parents didn't really instill the values that we possess today, right? Even to be open mm-hmm. and willing. Most parents are going, don't be open and willing. No, you listen to what I say, you behave, I'll reward you for your compliance. But you and I, if we're going to get one message across, can you agree with me that it is to be, it is to keep that, that heart space, you were telling me your heart, keep it wide and infinite because that's what's out out there is infinite glory, infinite uh, success, infinite serenity is mm-hmm. all there, but we close it off. Well, and yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. You, you know, the biggest, I mean, the biggest obstacle, in my opinion, which is the, the, the kind of discovery work that I do in my Sculpting Your Life platform, is the biggest obstacle to success that everybody has, by the way, including me, is me. I'm my big, biggest yeah. obstacle. Biggest. I get. I, I, I'm. I'm. I can get in my own way really, really well. Yeah. The, the the gift is to get out of your own way. If you want to live the the limitless, infinite life that Craig was just talking about, and be your authentic self, and truly show up in the gift of who you are, then stop putting roadblocks in front of you. Stop creating barriers to your success. Stop trying to find ways that protect you from you. You don't need to be protected from you. You need to step into you and really, really blossom. And sculpting your life is about that. So sculpting your life, the metaphor is when Michelangelo, the great artist, saw this block of granite, which was discolored, cracked. Nobody wanted it because it wasn't perfect which is yeah. thank god if things were perfect we'd have nothing to work on it wasn't right. perfect right. and but he saw david and all he did was take everything in the way out of the way and there's david now if anybody's ever seen the statue of david uh, up close i have i'm pretty sure you probably have too mm-hmm. craig it's a magnificent mm-hmm. piece of art and so what what i tell people is 
once you learn how to get out of your own way, okay, and let go of all that stuff that you keep yep. you, you keep hiding behind, if yeah. you will, then you get to sculpt the masterpiece known as you. That's true. And we are all a masterpiece. This is what most people don't believe this. They think it's Pollyanna, the way you speak. And, oh, my yeah, God, that's, that's sure. for somebody else. Or, you know, uh, in Philadelphia, they go, that's gay. <laughs> or something like yeah. that. Right, you know, sure, uh, sure. You know, you know, all these ways that people can avoid tenderness, openness, kindness, generosity, all those ways that we are, are moving from self and into somewhere else, into a darkness. And I, this is called Still Standing Up, the podcast. And it really is, is about the stand. Make a stand for yourself. And these other forces that come at us, be you. That's why I love Star Wars the best for me. It's the best metaphor ever. I mean, it's uh -huh. really the Jedi Knights, they stand they're unique, by the way. There's no clones. Everyone else is a clone, right? Yeah. But they, they are the unique ones. You've got one that looks like Yoda and Mace Windu. I mean, they're all completely unique. And they're not about offense. They'll defend because they've got this light inside of them that protects. It protects others. It protects our own integrity. And if you listen to that, look at what Luke did. Luke just was, he finally was open because he was closed. Remember everything? Ah, God, this is stupid. Those are those voices. Listen mm -hmm. to the voice that's you. And the, that voice, we're talking about music here with, with Paul. That voice of you is the one that could be sung. Doesn't have to be in, end up on Broadway, but it could. Doesn't have to end up to be a best-selling album, but it could. You have no limits. And that's what I hope people understand is you've got two guys that, you know, <laughs> ran across a lot of trouble, jail, straight jackets. Where did we go? Where did we, what did we choose to do with that? Do we still, still go hang out with more prisoners, more jailbirds, more crazy people? Mm. Which, which path did we choose? We chose to surround ourselves with greatness, with people who are in the evolutionary process. That's what I encourage and, people to do. Absolutely, and I I know that's what you what you uh, what you teach in, in uh, your course and and the tool. Uh, I mean, even man, your comedy, bro. Your comedy is all about you know. Although, listen, it's, excuse my language. It's funny as shit. You are one of the funniest human beings I've ever seen in my life. And I always tell people, you know, I always say, have you have you haven't you, you haven't seen Craig? And I go, I can do that pretty good, can I? Not bad. Well, you you, you called it doctor. A lot of people, it's master. I'm the, I'm the master, okay, though, whatever. baby. I'm not the doctor, baby, but I do have a, I do have a tongue depressor. We'll open up and say, ah ha ha, baby. Oh yeah, I'm the there love. There you go. Master. Come on, there you, you try it now. Try it with me. I did. No, no, uh, that was a bad attempt. That was more like Elmer Fudd. Okay. Oh, I'm a love man. I'm a love doctor. Come on. Yeah, baby. Yeah, Let's hear baby. It. Let's hear it, Paul. Yeah, now, baby. Now I'm gonna keep this not. It's silly, but I'm gonna take it back to huh? your theme. That's my success song. Yeah. That's the song that Absolutely. reverberates inside of me. It, it is a reverberation that takes place with the Love Master. People seem to identify with it. They connect with it because I'm making fun of somebody that would talk like that, which is having Absolutely. fun. It just up levels, up levels, up levels, where some people are just stuck with, ah, it's a dirty joke or whatever it is. They're stuck. Don't stay stuck. Get in the flow. You're, I call it genuine energy flow. Get in the flow. Right. Let it flow, baby. Yeah, they, I'll get you, you, I'll get you so you so wet. They'll have to call FEMA, baby. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right, baby. God, you, you know, you know, yeah. I love that too. I got more wood than Home you, Depot to repair that, baby. <laughs> oh my God, I got to come see you. Uh, you you you. You've, you've, added some, you've added some new stuff. I have I like hundreds. It. I have hundreds of Love Master lines. Right. You know what I like to say, Paul. People go, well, it's you know the same stuff. I go, it's not the same stuff. It's but people do like the best of. Like that's one of the things that they they yell for that, and they like other parts of my act. But what I tell them is, what's great is I get to rewrite the jokes. Where someone like Springsteen, he can't do "Baby, I'm Born to Trot," "Baby, I'm Born to Jog." He can't change it up at yeah, all. Yeah, baby, I'm because no, no. people want to sing yeah. along with that, and they start to with the love mess, but then I mess them all up because I have a million lines of the love master yeah. making them appropriate to whatever. The conditions are like right now we have a musician 
And I got the drumstick, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just making it anything. Yeah. You make anything dirty. But, all right, but it's not dirty. It's clean. It's good, clean, fun. We need to have more fun in life. So that's why I had you on our show today. Is because I always love your approach. It's not too serious. It, it has this lightness to it. It has this making fun of yourself. I was in a straitjacket. And it's not like you're walking around going, I'm still in a straitjacket. I'm, I'm still a victim. I'm definitely not in a straitjacket anymore. You should but, be at times, but <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, they, they, I should be in handcuffs too. That's we all should, yeah, right. But but you know the thing about it is, listen, man. I you know, I, I every time I speak, I'm very transparent about my whole story. Okay, and and uh, but every time I speak and and I tell people all these kinds of things, and you know, you know, it's like you see people's jaw drop, and you look in the audience, they're like, what? How is this yeah. guy still alive? You yeah. know, and they'll yeah. come off stage and they'll say to me, "Don't you regret any of that stuff?" Right. And I say, "Hey, listen." I say, "Hey, listen." Whatever time it is, whatever date it is, all I have is the present moment because all we have, ladies and gentlemen, is the present moment. It's the past is gone and the future is not here yet. Yeah. So all we have is the present moment. So all I say to them, I always say, "Listen, do I regret anything? No, because everything I've done in my life has gotten me to." 107 on november 15th 2023 talking to craig shoemaker every on my birthday my on my birthday uh, november 15th you just said okay. november 15th i just realized it's my birthday today it's your birthday so, so <laughs> do, now so do i regret no would i have liked to have done it differently sure but i can't so move on yeah i wonder what things i would do differently it's interesting i i it's so funny because a lot of people attribute success to money or type of job career and things like that but my regrets are more uh self-evolution of yeah. steps that i took that took me off of me and on to someone else's vibration we're talking yep. about sing singing song and vibration and frequency when i go to someone else's negative dark vibration of anger misplaced rage it goes inside of me and i respond that is not a musician. That is not an artist that's responding. That's someone no. in fear and doubt of who they truly are. And when we're off of that path, that's where my regrets come. And, and you know, I, I would agree with that. You know, listen, man, would I have, you know, I, I probably wish I didn't spend as much money as I did on cocaine. How's that? Okay, great. <laughs> but I did, so don't worry about it, okay? But the truth of the matter is, is that, again, everybody, everybody wakes up. So when you wake up in the morning, you have one of two things. I call it the either or principle in life, bro. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Okay. It's, there's no gray area. It's not rocket science. And so, you know, we don't talk bobbly cock and we don't talk highfalutin and we don't talk Bob. We, I, I'm, a, I'm a nuts and bolts guy and I know you are too and, and how you approach and how you help people get from right. where they are in their life to where they want to go. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm a nuts and bolts guy, but I know that the first thing that you got to do is you got to stop listening to that little small voice in your head that tells you you're not enough. Because most people do that. There's always three I, three forms to an idea. You and I are idea guys. I come up with more freaking ideas than oh I know what God. to do with. I've it's got ridiculous. more freaking journals with yeah. shit in it. Okay, yeah, right. But that's good. That's who we, we think. We're creative. We're imaginative. We have limitless imagination. Yeah. Okay, that's and, all of and us. We all, and we all do. Exactly. We all, we all do. do. Write it down, everybody. Write it down. There's no wrong thought. Exactly. And but here's even the problem with the so, yeah. Even if it's what? Even if it's a thought that you think is going to uh, be destructive, that thought could be there, so you're not destructive. I mean, it, there's so many things when we have it can these turn thoughts, into being it can turn into exactly. something instructive and constructive. That's yeah. the thing is we can't eliminate or run from these things and these feelings and these thoughts. And these inspirations, don't embrace them and figure out what's this for. It could be a project that never, ever sees the light of day. Exactly. Which is why I always tell people that I work with, hey, get, a, get an idea journal, man. You know, I got, I got a million journals. Get an idea journal and write everything down. Don't censor yourself. If idea comes, write right. it down, write it down. At the end of the day, look at it. And here's what will happen. You look at it and go, Jesus Christ, what the hell was I thinking then? Or you might go, wow, that's brilliant. Just write it down. And by the way, don't censor yourself. You can, you can dust it off at another time. It, I thought of something, and you look back and you go, "Oh, this this is now the timing." You do not know what divine timing is. We have no exactly. idea. But the divine timing of the presence is always perfect timing. 
Should Absolutely. Absolutely. You should. I have, you should, you should write all this shit come up, He tells me I come up with these quotes all the time. He, and, that and, one and, might work. And, that, and that's good. You should write it down. <laughs> but see, as I was saying, I so, so, see, this, so, so, you, you know, the, the either or principle, either you're going to do it or you're not. So there's always three forms to an idea. There's the idea. Oh, man, I got a great idea. And then there's the outcome. So A is the idea. C is the outcome. A, great idea. I'm going to do X. That's C. What happens in B, in between the idea and the outcome, is the most important thing in life. Because yeah. you know what happens there? Either people do one of two things, bro. Either, oh, I don't know how to do that, and they never do it. Or, what I suggest you do is ask yourself the following question. What do I need to do to make it happen? And now you're in action. You're in action. Okay? You're, you're, now, you're, I, you're, either, you're either in or you're out. Exactly. At, that, at stage B, you're in. And you immerse yourself in in the process, in the discovery, in the yep. in the uh, in the journey. All of that you are now in. You're in. It's just like being dropped in the middle of the woods. Now you can and, just give up and hope for a helicopter to come along and come get you, or you can go find your damn way out of the woods. And you're exactly. going to find your what do I way, need? hell or high water, resilience. That's this show is called Still Standing Up. You have to stand up to these fears. Stand up to the doubters. Stand up to people that are against you. Stand up to these forces yeah. because they are irrelevant. They are meaningless. But we put meaning to them, and that prevents us from our true bliss. Well, of course, you know we put meaning to every thought that comes into our life. You yeah. know, so, so why don't you start one. putting some good, put some good meaning onto it? Okay, yeah. you know, I always tell people you can either listen to your little voice of negativity or your big voice of positivity. Now it's it's not enough to just be positive it's it's more about being able to to direct your mind so you we, we all have an active mind so aside from the songs that i do you know uh, and aside from all of my courses that i have you know i have this brain technology which which uh, most people would call meditation but i call it tuning in because i create my own language right and so right. it's a seven step process i take people through it and basically <laughs> what it does is it'll reset rewire and recode your super mind so you can tune into your superpower okay yep. and it's called sculptation and yeah. but it's really powerful stuff and and i do it a little bit differently it's a binaural beat technology where i take binaural beat heartbeat and breathing patterns um and i put them together and write this really cool music to it and i do this process over it which most people would call visualization but i call it mind sculpting okay yeah because i'm whatever but anyway so but the truth of the matter is the left to your own devices and i'm talking about this is my personal experience guys Left to my own devices, I can be my own worst enemy or my greatest ally, okay? And if I'm going to live the life, the epic ideal life, that's what I call it. My, if I'm going to live my epic ideal life, then I need to be the star of it. And that's not an ego point of view. That's I have to be the star of my life, man. Absolutely. Okay? And everybody, everybody else is a, a supporting actor. Exactly, because you set the stage. You, you, I, we are the writers, the creators, the directors. We're CGI. We are makeup. We are everything it, bro. element it takes to make a feature film of ourselves. We absolutely. are the leaders of it. We are the absolute leaders, but we choose the casting calls. And we could choose in a way that will prevent us from putting that film at a big premiere. We can stop that from happening by choosing <laughs> the wrong cast. By choosing a cast that's from your past that you haven't worked out a wound. By choosing somebody that's not a good energy for you that's going to take you down. That takes up your time. Where you could be putting your time into yourself and uh, whatever your process is. Your meditative process. Whatever your, your health process is. We take ourselves away from it because we become distracted by these people who are just... They're not good for us to be around, and yet I'm still guilty of it. I still find it. Paul, I, I got to close, but I will tell you one. And I always like to look and that things is fun. I'm, I'm dating again, and it is, it is a, a, absolutely, it is, it's a new movie, and I'm trying to cast this thing, but I need a new casting director. I need a new, I need a new director. Yeah. Because the, I go on three dates in a row. Yeah. All three dates. Listen to this had to blow into a breathalyzer tube to start their car. So, okay, well, so, so, so there's, there's like some alcohol involved here. And, uh, 
So not a lot of presence, but I'm looking for presence right. and I'm looking for, you know, somebody I connect with vibrationally, what we were talking about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want that in my life, certainly with the love of my life. I want that love vibration. Yeah, so I absolutely. last second, Kenny Loggins calls me, says, I've got tickets for you. I said, oh my God, I don't have a date. And I found one online. An hour later, I'm picking her up, which was awesome. I love spontaneity. And I tell her, she goes, how's your dating? I go, well, three in a row. I had to blow into a tube to start their car. She goes, ha, 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 you might find this funny. Me too. <laughs> but she, oh, she had the same experience. Four in a row. And oh, one the other boy. day said, I don't know. I think I can go out with you because you don't drink. I want someone to drink with. There, That might be five. And then, oh, my God, what's out there? And I'm imploring everyone. It's not. This has nothing to do with the drinking itself. But it does have to do with get into your own resonance, your own sound, your own vibration, and don't allow these other forces. You, you're in a low vibration. When you bring, I'm bringing them in because I'm in a low vibration. Of course. You attract, you attract what you put out there. Life's it, a mirror image. It's exactly right. So I'm here to affirm for myself I'm going to stay in that space and attract people like Paul Hoffman. How can we go see you? How can, we, uh, how can they go get some... A song. I want to get a song written for me, but I'm gonna send you the songs, bro. I don't have a so, love master so you, song. I need a love so, master song. Well, let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, um, yeah, all right, so you, yeah, baby. that's not good. <laughs> yeah, baby. So that you can find a me. little better. That's a love master with a cold. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna baby. practice. Don't worry. <laughs> and then when I come to your show, you'll, you'll, you'll say, anybody in the audience, and I'll raise my hand and make fun of me, and it'll be perfect. Don't worry. I, I, as, as a matter of fact. If I come and see, I'm going to sit in the freaking back because I know you'll, oh, you'll call me up. Anyway, oh, you know that. Yeah, yeah sit, sit in the back. Now, how do we get a hold of you so we, we can get rid of our so mind you, traps and sculpt our, our life, this whole personal discovery architect? How do we find the architect? Frank Lloyd uh, so you, Wright. You, 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 <laughs> thank Frank you, Lloyd Wright of personal right. development. So so you go to go to sculptingyourlife.com. Okay. Sculptingyourlife.com. That's and, an easy one. And, so we'll go see and, Paul and, Hoffman. And, and, and then you can, you can get, uh, you can, I, I'll give you a couple of, uh, of my brain technologies. And you can, as I said earlier, you can go to successsongs.com and get mm-hmm. a couple of songs, two different Love things. It. And with Sculpting Your Life, you can learn more things. And then, and then here's what I always do in a podcast. Anything what? that I do, because you know what, man, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve and, and get people to truly step into who they are and live their epic ideal life. So my personal email, everybody, is Paul Hoffman, 24, Paul Hoffman, 24, H-O-F-F-M-A-N, the number 24, at gmail.com. My cell phone number is 323-810-5588. You got now, bigger coatings than I do. Now, here's the The game. dating apps are that out. all, they're trying to get your information. And you just gave that's it to all, all the dating apps that's out fine. there. That, but they're not on this anyway. They're, they're that's, busy, I don't, busy, care, busy I don't care who's fishing. on there. Yeah. So here's the thing. You can call me or email me, anybody that's listening. And if you have any question or any way I can serve Shoemaker's community, you can count on me doing that. Just if you send me an email, just say, Hey, I heard you on Craig's uh, podcast. Yeah. Most people, Craig, as you know, most people won't use this. Most people will be too afraid. Of course afraid. not. You might but, have, but you if, might have one that says, yes. One that says and, I'm open-minded. What our theme was today, yep. be willing, be open-minded. We got to go. Paul, you're awesome. Thank you. I will see you in our, in our little mastermind group. And, uh, and we'll talk constantly, and I appreciate and you. Love you, bro. Thank you. Love you, too. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, remember, today is my birthday, laughterheels.org. Go Happy there. Happy birthday to you. Let's see. I got a guy that did Driven to Ford lately that's singing to me here. This is awesome. So That's it, brother. I want you all to please give a donation. Please, it's going to go to Stanley Ullman. I'm, I'm just going to be flat out about it. Stanley's having a rough go. He can't do stand-up anymore. We don't have unions. We don't have any protection as stand-ups. And we just fade away uh, because there's nothing in there that we can have residual checks. It's a really rough one, folks. It, it, and for him, it is. I'm very fortunate in my life. I'm still working. He can't. So please, laughterheels.org. It'll go to Stanley's. My son's godfather. He opened for me for years. He's been around me. He's offered millions of laughs. Time to give back to him. Okay, laughterheels.org. That's for my birthday. My birthday present is to give presents to other people. That's how it works. Right, Paul? All right. Thank you, Paul. Absolutely. And we'll see you all, all next right. time. Now, now, Johnny's big finger is going to come in here and, and, and get us off here. All right. Okay. Much love, everybody. <laughs> you too.